Throughout medical history, there was perhaps no one quite like John Romulus Brinkley II. Brinkley practiced medicine without a license for decades, launched two campaigns for governor, and received international recognition for his fertility surgeries involving goat testicles. The American Medical Association didn't take Brinkley or his untested medical practices lightly. His burst of publicity and brazen claims attracted the association's attention. But one man, Dr. Morris Fishbein, made it his life's work to build a case against Brinkley. Fishbein would stop at nothing to find a way to destroy the charismatic charlatan. It is not known the exact year of this film, nor is there any factual documentation to prove if this film was ever utilized by Fishbein or any other organization. Just another moment here. Yes, yes, that's perfect. Okay, allow me an opportunity just to get a little more comfortable. Ah. So, Johnny, uh, may I call you Johnny? Okay then. First, Johnny, I want to thank you for letting me in. I do not believe I'm supposed to be talking with you. I just want to have a friendly conversation with you, nothing more. Uh, you know your father is a hard man to reach. Daddy is busy. He has a lot of people counting on him and demanding his time. Well, that's a portion of what I want to speak with you about. Um, who are these people that your father is helping? Daddy has a vision to end world suffering as a surgeon and in public office. Public office, you say? Interesting. I do not believe we are supposed to talk a lot about that. Daddy and Mommy talk about the governor's mansion quite often. I was not aware. So, Johnny... Please tell me who your father has helped with his medicines. People come from all over the United States to see Daddy. He makes them healthier and happier with his surgeries. He has made new medicine that helps people who are sick. Johnny, do you know much about the goat gland surgeries? Oh, yes. Daddy allows me to stand in the doorway of the operating room sometimes. I find it fascinating. Someday, I will hold a scalpel and become a great surgeon. Daddy told me so. You watch the surgeries? Sometimes. I also have my lessons, so I'm often in my room studying. But as a treat, Daddy will let me come and watch the surgeries. Does the blood bother you? Bother me? No. When I watch, I feel like I'm in another world. Like I'm watching magic. Magic. I try to imagine the future. Johnny. Does your father believe his surgeries and medicine really cure people? They do. This is why I'm not allowed to talk to you, Dr. Fishbein. Daddy and Mommy say you are the enemy, and you cause people not to believe. Why is this, Doctor? Are you scared of Daddy? Mommy says you are mean because Daddy scares you. Daddy will be home soon. Now, now, Johnny. <laughs> Let's not get upset. I assure you that I do not want to destroy your family. I'm merely here to find out how your father's medicine really works because, quite frankly, there are many people out there that doubt the evidence and the effectiveness of his practices. Daddy was born to save the world. The unbelievers will die of sickness and disease. Have you not heard my daddy speak of the future? Why risk being on the embalmer's table in three weeks when you could see my daddy right now and be healed? You sound like a minister on a Sunday morning. You are quite the well-spoken lad. Daddy says if people are to follow you, you must immerse them in your own eloquence. Daddy makes me practice debate and speech for the day the wolves come knocking on the door. Wolves? You, doctor. You. Daddy's new radio station will reach the masses, and soon people will know the truth. Health is at my father's fingertips, and he is building an empire. It is our destiny. Johnny? Has anyone ever died from one of your father's surgeries? Johnny? Can you repeat the question? Yes. Has anybody ever died during one of your father's surgeries? No human has ever been carried away from my father's table that were not in a better place when they first arrived. Johnny, that is not really an answer. What I was looking for is... Johnny, boy! Mommy and Daddy are home!
Dr. Morris Fishbein spent most of his career chasing Brinkley. He became somewhat of a star and even graced the cover of Time magazine in 1937. In 1938, the AMA editor targeted Brinkley yet again by publishing a two-part scathing series called Modern Medical Charlatans. It included a thorough review of Brinkley's work. Brinkley sued Fishbein for libel in 1939, but lost the case. A barrage of lawsuits followed the jury verdict. The IRS also investigated Brinkley for tax fraud. He declared bankruptcy in 1941, the same year the U.S. and Mexico reached an agreement on allocating radio bandwidth and shut down his blaster station, XERA. Brinkley suffered heart failure and died on May 26, 1942 in San Antonio, Texas. At the time, he was completely penniless and forgotten by most. Interestingly enough, Brinkley had been targeted by so many government agencies that, even upon his death, there was a pending mail fraud case. In 1976, funeral services were held in Del Rio, Texas, for John R. Johnny Boy Brinkley III. At age 49, Johnny Boy was found in his home with a single gunshot wound and a pistol in his hand. He was buried next to his beloved daddy at their family plot in the Forest Hill Cemetery Midtown in Memphis, Tennessee. His mother, Minnie, joined them upon her death in 1980.